I've got a quick question for you. What does David Ogilvy, the father of advertising and the founder of Ogilvy Mather, what does he have in common with an AD cooker, a cooking stove, just like the one you might see right now? The truth of the matter is, David Ogilvy, the legendary father of advertising, started his working life as an apprentice chef. And because he was an apprentice chef, he understood the buying decision of chefs and that made him a really successful salesman of the AGA cooker. He even wrote a book called The Theory and Practice of Selling an AGA Cooker. So that was his first real success. But what's the moral to the story? The moral to the story is that that understanding of the buying decision is key to your marketing campaign plan and how effective and how valuable that return on investment is. So click on this link here if you want to learn about a framework to focus your marketing campaign plan to get the most out of your marketing dollar. However, if you stay tuned, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give you a Excel workbook and an example of how to calculate the return on investment and the lifetime value of a client in your marketing campaign. So stay tuned, we're about to flick over to that right now. Okay guys, welcome to this express session on how to calculate your marketing ROI and include the lifetime value of your customers or clients. Now, to start with, we need to clearly have a marketing budget. What I'd suggest you do is you separate the design and setup of your marketing campaign as against your advertising itself, your, your marketing touch points where you're actually going out to the marketplace and communicating your value. So design and setup is typically a budget that you might allow for grocery wear creation, so there's, uh, literally graphic designers or copywriters or advice on your marketing campaign, that or creation of videos if that's what you're doing there. So design and setup is a budget that you might want to um, allow for and then think about well how much you're going to spend on actually your marketing reach which is actually getting out there, which is actually executing the uh, marketing touch points. So whether your marketing touch points are paying for uh, being involved in networking group or attending networking events right through to sponsorship or perhaps you're running a few hosted functions, perhaps it's print media advertising or even cold calling and you're outsourcing some cold calling or advertising on radio or Google cost per click, whatever it may be, you need to make sure that you allow for that in your entire marketing campaign. This is what this, in this example, that's what this $30,000 uh, allows for. So it's for the total touch points involved in the marketing campaign as a whole. Now, what you need to do then is an estimate from there potential leads that you might get and or your goal in terms of leads and your conversion rate. So in this particular example what we're suggesting here is that from our marketing uh, campaign touch points we're going to get a hundred leads and then we're going to convert one in five. What you need to include particularly if you're a service business is you need to include the cost of lead conversion and what that is is that uh, if particularly if you're a service business and people aren't just buying off the shelf or, or on a website where there's, there's no uh, interaction with the purchase, the final purchase. If you're a service business and you're doing tenders and you're showing people um, demonstrations on how it be done or the way it would work, then perhaps there's a few hours there associated with your staff member who has to go out and, and, and wine and dine and, and romance your potential client. So in this example, what I've done here is just said, look, four hours at um, $60 an hour, uh, just as a rough guide, for closing the deal. So because we've got 100 leads, that's, that equals we've got 100 times the $240 of the cost associated with winding and dining our 100 leads. So then what we have is we've got a total conversion cost for our marketing campaign for the year, which is $59,000. So now that we've established that, we have to go through and work out, well, how much revenue is this actually going to bring through? Now, if we've achieved 20 clients, and in this particular example, let's say this particular service business, let's say it's a professional service business and people come to them and pay $3,000 a year for the work that they, they perform. Let's say this was a tax firm and that was a tax return for, and that's 20 multiplied by 3,000, particular piece of advice, let's say. And the cost per client, in terms of margin, the cost of servicing it is 40% of the, of the unit price. So the gross margin per client in this particular example is $1,800.
So what that implies is that from the 20 new clients, we're going to bring in $36,000. From the 20 new clients, we're going to bring in $36,000, even though you've spent $59,000. But bear this in mind, this is obviously an investment, and we're trying to work out what the return on investment is. So what happens is that over the next few years, we have a client attrition rate. And let's say the client, for argument's sake, a third of the clients uh, disappear, go out of business, merge, move, location, whatever it might be, the change in circumstance, and you lose 33%. Now, these are all conservative numbers, of course. So in the following year, you've, from that original marketing campaign plan for the previous year, you've still got 13 of those clients. And then what we need to do is we need to inflate the prices. So we inflate the prices by inflation, and here I've just used the example of 3%, so potentially, and uh, how you'd actually calculate that is multiply the previous year by 1 plus the 3%, as you can see there. We've got the same margin, and our gross margin per client has increased to $1,800.54. The next thing that you need to take into consideration is the retention marketing, and that is the marketing that you might do during the year to keep your clients engaged and keep them happy with what you do. It could be just as simple as a Christmas gift, or it could be it could be publications, it could be invitations, it could be a number of things. But there's marketing involved in retention. So what we're trying to do is making sure that we actually feed that into our costs. So then the future cash flows on the second year is $22,000. So we've gained 22834 dollars from the clients we gained two years earlier. So we can do this calculation and we can do it for the next five years. And ultimately what we have is we've got the total cash flows uh, associated with delivering that service or, or gaining those clients and delivering that service over five years, including the margin. What we need to do next is we need to work out what the present value of the future cash flows is. And this is this calculation here, so where we discount the cash flows over the future. We can do it a, a couple of ways. You can do it manually, uh, which is what I have here. So discounting is um, 1 plus the discount rate. So discount rate is 15%. So you divide the nominal, what they call a nominal, which is the original number, by that 1 plus the uh, rate of 15%. And in the following years, you discount further. So you multiply that uh, and you compound, they call it the compounding uh, impact of the discount. You compound that rate, so you multiply out the discount rate. As you can see there in the second year, it's uh, 1.15 multiplied by 1.15 to give you what the appropriate discount rate is. However, a real simple way of doing it is actually just using the NPV calculation uh, in your Excel workbook this here, the insert function. So if I was to give you an example of how you do that, you click the insert function, you go to financials um, in your category box, so you go to financials, you find NPV, you find NPV, where is it? Let me find it. It's just here. You find NPV, click OK, you put in your rate, which is 15%, in this particular case, and then you add in your values. So on so forth. I actually picked the wrong line there. Let me show you the correct line, which is the nominal, what they call the nominal, which is the original value, the original dollar value. And you just move forward. And once you're done, of course, you click OK. But we've already done that. We've already done that uh, in this particular example for all five values. I just showed you it was three because I was trying to make it short. But we've already done that, and what that means is that over the, uh, what it shows is that the present value of the monies, the future future cash flows is at uh, $68,000. So what it implies is that over the next five years, for that $59,000 that you spent in year zero, in that particular start of the period, you're actually going to get $68,000 back for it. So you're actually going to get a return of, in terms of the equivalent today's money of $9,914 or 17%. That's actually how you create, can calculate your marketing ROI on a campaign and include the lifetime value of the clients. So if I just to wrap it up, really, or try to be, um, just go over this um, one more time. Really important are things like your conversion rate, because you can see here, if I was to change it to 15%, we're actually not making any money. Or if, I was, if you had some really clever um, marketing, which really hit the hotspots and, and made people want to come over, and you were able, your, your guys who convert the leads were really good, you can have a 75% ROI if, if that conversion rate was 30%. So you can see that makes a massive difference. What your conversion rate is can make a extreme difference in regards to your return on marketing. So 
Same is to be said for leads. So for example, if we had 150 leads, wow, 46%, whereas uh, if you only had 100, lead, 100 leads, it was 17%. So the expertise in getting that targeted marketing, getting an understanding when you should be advertising, where you should be advertising, and how you should be saying it, which is what I call the three Bs of marketing, uh, which we explained in our, our premiership business, and you can have a, a, a free marketing campaign planner, uh, which is available on the premiershipbusiness.com website. What you need to do is you need to get that right, those three Bs of marketing, to make sure that you generate as many leads as possible. Then you need to be able to sell and convert at the highest rate possible. You can just, I just showed you there how important those two things were. Then it's about romancing over the period and the, of the relationship, which is maintaining a, a, a low level of client attrition uh, over the lifetime. Again, if we were to see that the client attrition was only 15%, the return has gone from 17% to 56%. So these are all key factors. Don't forget to include the lead cost of conversion. Don't forget to include the price the cost of delivery because sometimes what happens is uh, in when you have the conversation with your sales guys or perhaps the marketing team sometimes it's easy to forget and, and uh, people might uh, have some throwaway lines about top line revenue and, and they call that the ROI or the return on investment well it's not because you're still going to pay for your goods and services the ROI is actually uh, how to calculate that is actually in the gross, gross margin gross contribution and then the retention marketing, don't forget to include the retention marketing, which often is forgotten as well. Last thing you need to consider is that great, it's all great, good and well to get all this new business, but you need to make sure you've got the right business model so you can, you can actually include incremental capacity costs, and that might include accommodation, additional staff, additional overhead costs, additional IT, additional software requirements. What I've given you here is a good starting point to work out your marketing return on investment. I hope that's helped you. I'm sure it will. Put it in place. And if you like this worksheet, just um, follow the links uh, on this um, video and uh, tell me where you want to send it because I can send you this workbook and it will give you a good starting point so that you don't have to start from scratch. Happy to answer any questions. Make sure you comment. Make sure you like. Share it with your friends and colleagues. I look forward to answering your questions. If you have any, by all means, answer your questions. I'll read your comments. I'll definitely reply. Good luck with it all. And so there it is, how to calculate your marketing return on investment, including the lifetime value of your clients. Now, if you would like that worksheet, just click on the link, wherever it might be, on this particular screen. Click on the link and tell me where you would want me to send that workbook so you don't have to start from scratch. I hope you've got some value out of that and I look forward to speaking with you in the future. Now remember, darkness is the first enemy of mankind. So surround yourself with people who enlighten your world. Bye for now.